That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Peter von Kant, the 22nd film directed by Francois Ozon, which opened the 2022 Berlin International Film Festival, where it also competed. Strand releasing is releasing it uh, September 2nd, 2022. And it is, of course, a kind of remake of the classic Rainer Werner Fassbinder film, The Bitter Tears of Petra von Kant from 1972. Do I know any of Francois's other films? I don't know. Before you started listing them all off? I, I, my favorite is when he was kind of in that, uh, his early days as a terrible enfant uh, with sitcom. Oh, you've seen Criminal Lovers, the queer remake of Hansel and Gretel, because I had a movie night for it about a decade ago. What? With Jeremy Renier. Yes, you have seen that film. Uh, he, I, I like when he kind of shifted into this art house. Uh, Jeremy Renier, is that Jeremy Renner? Jeremy Renier is a Belgian actor. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. You will look him up and see him, and that's come up before. Every time I mention him, you think I'm talking about Jeremy Renner. It is not him. Anyhow, uh, my favorite, the sweet spot for me in Azon is when he kind of uh, collaborated with Charlotte Rampling on a few things in the early 2000s, particularly Under the Sand, and Swimming Pool is great, uh, but Eight Women, I know I've talked about a lot, the musical starring Catherine Deneuve and Isabelle Aupère and yes. Fanny Ardant, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so... You've heard his name a lot. You know, every other film festival I go to has a new film. I think he works too much. He's clearly a fan of Fassbender. His debut, I believe it's his debut, was Water Drops on Burning Rocks, which was a script that Fassbender wrote that had never been made. Okay. I've seen The Bitter Tears of Petra von Kant. Because? You want me, wanted me to watch it. Because it's in my top ten films of all time. Favorite film. I don't remember it, except that the, the main character is kind of this, like, over-the-top, awful person margie carstensen is amazing okay mm -hmm. this movie is a remake of that in that that main character is now a gay man and that character's uh that characterization sort of borrows from fassbender yeah Ozone is uh, obviously borrowing heavily from fassbender's own life very notable life uh, experiences and mannerisms uh, specifically his sort of penchant for straight married men yes right yep okay so the story is very basic uh peter von kahn is a filmmaker it's set in the 70s where are they living uh cologne germany in germany so they're speaking french in cologne germany but it's set in the year that the first petra came out in the 70s 72 okay so he's there he's a filmmaker he lives in his home with his assistant carl uh we see an actress who i did not recognize her face has changed a lot. Isabella Johnny, yes. So she's like... A, Who's also a likeness of is on my back. She in this movie plays an actor who's... Like she was in Peter's first film. So they kind of like blew up together. Like she helped him bl blow up. So they have a relationship and we see her come visit. And they're just talking. And they're kind of bitchy to one another. And right before she leaves... Her new boy toy shows up. This Amir. Guy, this guy named Amir. And he's younger and handsome and immediately peters into him and tells him like, oh, I think you'd be perfect for a movie I'm working on. Come by tomorrow to do an audition. So Amir comes back and they have a lengthy audition, which turns into seduction. They sleep together and... Nine Peter later. Peter professes his love to him like that first night. Mm -hmm. Then we flash forward nine months. They're still together. However, it goes as predicted. They're not like they're not really in love. Like Peter is infatuated with Amir. Amir's just there because Peter takes care of him. Peter uh, or um, Amir is married. He's from Australia. His wife is back there. And one day he gets a call saying that his wife is in Europe. So Amir tells Peter, "Buy me a plane ticket to go see her in Frankfurt." Mm -hmm. And they get into a fight. Amir leaves. Peter's distraught. Mm -hmm. So then we move forward to Peter's birthday where his mother, his daughter, and... Sidonie, Isabel. Uh, Isabel and Johnny show up to tell him happy birthday. And he goes off on all of them. Like, y'all ain't shit. Y'all just feed off of me. I'm tired of taking care of you. So then, a little bit later, he gets a phone call because now Amir is back with Isabella Johnny's character and she says call him and say something nice to him he does so now Peter's kind of in a better mood 
And then Carl, his assistant, who he treats like shit, we can talk about Carl. He approaches Carl and says, like, you know, I'm, I now realize I'm concerned about your happiness. I want you to be happy working here. He goes, tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself. And Carl looks at him, and we think that he might, at, like, at first Carl seems grateful, and then we think he might, like, give him a kiss. But Carl spits in his face and walks out of the house. The end. Well, not the end, because then we see uh, Peter longingly look at footage of Amir as he reaches for him. Um, I don't think... I, I think two things. I think the 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 bitter tears of Petra von Kahn is better. Okay. I also don't know why we needed this film. We, need, uh, we needed this film ostensibly because Azan is obsessed with Fassbender and wants to emulate him. This feels self-indulgent. It also it felt cheap to me. It looked... I, th- I think... I think I like how it's shot. It's shot by Manu Dacost, who's a favorite cinematographer of mine. But I think what you mean is the maybe cinematography the production yes, design. Let me be clear. I don't think the cinematography is bad. I think the like the set design, the styling, it, it just feels like a modern interpretation of the seventies. Like yes, like on a like on a cable network television show where they do a flashback to the seventies, and so the costume departments pulling together some shit and it kind of felt like that i guess my biggest problem too is for this to make sense to me and for my understanding of fassbender's proclivities first of all amir on site the minute he walks through that door like it it just he just looks gay so then us telling them telling us that he's married it it just was like okay i don't think especially because it's amir ben salim who's uh he's an amalgamation of uh el hadi ben salim and gunther kaufman uh you know two people that populated a lot of uh and you showed me pictures of those gentlemen and Mm -hmm. they look like how i would have imagined Mm -hmm. this guy just seems gay and is very quickly like sure i'll sleep with you okay then I feel like the actor playing Peter should have been more repulsive. But the actor playing him... Denis Minochet, yeah. ...is, I thought, quite handsome. I mean, minus that awful hair color. And he doesn't seem... Well, he really doesn't pop off until the end. Especially what we know of Fassbender ends, taking into mind Karstensen's Petra von Kant. Like, she's awful from jump. Like, she, she's hard to deal with uh, on all sides. Uh, and and he just seems like kind of this... You know what he feels like? A watered-down version of Eddie from Ab Fab. Sure. Like, kind of fabulous, not, not funny. Like, Eddie's obviously hilarious, so that's what he's missing. But he just seems kind of ridiculous, and he's uh, self-absorbed, mm-hmm. but he's not a monster. That actor also... You know, I know people are going to comment that I shouldn't say someone doesn't or does seem gay, but he doesn't seem gay, like... It, it just felt kind of like... I agree with... You know, this... I, I remember the first time I saw it at the Berlin Film Festival, I thought this would have been a great role for Divine out of drag in the early 80s. Yes. If somebody thought to make this then. Yes. Then. So I just... And then I kept thinking if that actor playing Peter were like at a gay bar today, he'd probably be quite popular because he's like a bear and he has a nice face. And so then it's like, this doesn't feel the, the combination of the actor playing Peter and the actor playing Amir and this dance they're doing where they're sort of using each other feels very forced and kind of silly. Mm-hmm. So that didn't work for me. I agree. It, do, it just doesn't feel seedy or sleazy or scandalous enough. If we're talking about, you know, what Fassbender would actually get up to, which, you know, there, there are, you know, countless rumors about how, or uh, instances of how abusive he was, you know, because he made 40 some movies and died in his early 40s, you know, very out of, uh, out of shape and on all kinds of substances. And, you know, they'd run out of a budget on a film and he would, you know, prostitute his actors and actresses to go get the rest of the budget he needs. Like, Yeah, knowing, I didn't know that, but like, yeah, it just doesn't feel seedy enough. Then the con. It ends without much consequence. It's just like, well, okay. You don't really need... You know, in the end of the original where Erm Herman is the maid and there's just like randomly this gun she has as she packs up and leaves when she's... You know, because the the dance that this those two characters are playing is one of like dominance and submissive and, and kind of the interesting elements there. And this film is so contained at it's less than an hour and a half running time it's very short it's it, 75 minutes it's, it feels very short and this feels like just a constant like easter egg basket of fast tidbits more than it is a characterization of amir or uh peter 
Yeah, and it doesn't really pop off till like the hour mark at his birthday day on his birthday which is a fun scene it is fun because he's going off but i feel like that character needed that energy throughout throughout then because it just seems like he's just this guy like we're just watching this guy make a poor choice and then we flash forward nine months and it's predictable how it ends that that being said uh, hannah shagala shows up as his uh, mother and of course she was the object of affection in the original film uh, and uh, i think was the one it's either her or herman who started more Fast Mirror Productions more than anyone else. But that character uh, of Amir also is has relations to Hannah Shigala, to Fassbender, who, you know, kind of became her own persona and moved on and worked with a lot of great other great auteurs in the 80s. Uh, and so that's playing with that conflict there. So it's nice to see her. Uh, you know, she doesn't have much to do. I don't think a Johnny has much to do, but I think she looks great. And she looks fun, fun, yeah. Yeah, and I, I like her fabulousness. The, only the best th- part of the movie is Carl. I agree, and all of his expressions. Uh, the actor playing Carl is... Stéphane Crépon. Is like... A wisp of a human. He, I mean, if he's five foot six, seven, I don't know. He probably weighs like ninety pounds. He is super, super tiny, and they have him in these very tight fitting clothes, and he's mute, and he's just lurking around making faces. And oh yeah, all the facial expressions, uh, great comedic relief uh, from everything. But also the way he moves his body is very much like that. That that is the most fast bender esque moment or element of this film is, is really this characterization. But if you like Fassbender, there are all kinds of, you know, things you'll pick up on, like Amir staying at Hotel Doblin, because Doblin was the name of the uh, man, who, Alfred Doblin wrote Berlin Alexander Platz, the 15-hour opus that Fassbender directed. There's a, they show poster art because uh, Peter von Kant makes Amir a star, and the poster of the film that he starred in is, the translation is, Death is Hotter Than Love. Mm. Which, of course, is a reference to love is colder than death. Uh, th- again, I like all kinds of stuff like that, but I think there would have been a much smarter way to kind of blend that into something more compelling. There are people who I think will be interested in this movie. I'd be surprised if they love it. I had seen The Bitter Tears, like I've mentioned, and so there there was some investment in this movie. I'm not super familiar with Fassbender. So I can imagine someone who knows nothing about the previous film or the person that this characterization is based off of would find this kind of mediocre. Sure. Again, if you like Fassman, if you like Isabella Johnny, who you actually hear singing a song called Every Man Kills the Thing He Loves, which is <laughs> interesting. Uh, I think Denis Minochet comes alive at a certain moment, but there, there's that transitional phase when the, the breakup where he was really giving me Shelley Winters and Lolita. What would you give this movie? <sighs> Three. Based on, I think, the reference points, and it's a lot better than a, the last handful of Azon films I've seen, uh, I think three out of five is fair. I would give it two and a half out of five. I thought it was okay. I didn't care for it, but it, I, it's okay. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>